Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. And today I wanna talk to you about individual vitamins and if you should be taking them, okay? And so you're gonna learn, should you take vitamin A, should you take vitamin D, E, K, uh, vitamin C, should you be taking these individual vitamins on their own? And um, yeah, I wanna walk you through some of those and see why, or maybe there's a different route you could take to get them that would be more effective so you don't have a cabinet. I know one of the worst things that uh, a lot of people deal with when they're trying to go natural is they get this massive cabinet full of supplements. They're spending half their life savings on these supplements. Half of them don't even get all the bottle, all of it taken. and uh, Or you're taking it all and you can't live without it. So either way, that's that's not what we want. We want your body to be healing, functioning, you know, really working the way it's supposed to because health isn't that you're taking a bunch of supplements. It's not that you eat good. It's not that you exercise, right? Listen to this, guys. It's not that you eat good exercise. It's not that you take supplements. It's not that you uh, 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 meditate all day long, right? Health actually isn't those things at all. If it, People can live to 110 and drink and smoke and do everything wrong. And so health... I'm going to go a little philosophical before I dive into this uh, vitamin A and vitamin C and all that stuff. Health is the optimal functioning and healing of your body. This is the definition. It's the optimal functioning and healing of your body. It's not the absence of disease. Okay, so if health isn't the absence of disease, then uh, I'm sorry, if health is, is how well your body's functioning and healing, then we need to help restore your body's ability to function and heal at a maximum potential. That means get your body in balance so it heals. So when you're taking supplements, it's to give your body what it needs, but more importantly, when we're doing herbs, when we're doing supplements, when we're doing, if we do uh, some sort of therapeutic care like chiropractic or or uh, acupuncture, if you're doing uh, red light therapy, any of those things, it's all about just removing interference and giving your body's optimal ability to heal itself, not to cure anything. So that's what I wanna say up front. So let's just start with vitamin A. Should you take vitamin A? Um, and the short answer is majority of people, unless you're tested, you know your body's deficient in that, and you have some major liver issues or something, then no, I don't think you should take vitamin A if you haven't done full testing. Here's what you can do though, because a lot of people are deficient in vitamin A, and it is a very important nutrient for overall skin, eyes, most of the functions in our body, liver health. And so vitamin A, instead, take something like liver. Okay, vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, so it's not something you have to take every single day. It can kind of sit in the system. So do liver, maybe liver every other day. Take a capsule, grass-fed, free-range, organic liver, and that can be very effective, not just for vitamin A, but if you're for women, for iron levels, it can be very effective for um, a lot of other things, that are, uh, methylation factors that your body uses to detoxify. So I'm a big fan of organ meats, and liver is gonna be very high in vitamin A. You can also eat every day, and it's, it's your only, one of your main sources of straight retinol versus something like carrots, which is gonna be your beta, beta carotenoids. So, but you could also just eat a carrot every single day. There's tons of health benefits from just eating one raw carrot every single day, right? So you got, you could add, you could add in duck eggs, very high in vitamin A as well. So liver, duck eggs, carrots, that's what I would do to get my vitamin A. What about um, selenium, okay? A lot of people ask me, should I take selenium? There are cases when maybe I'll recommend selenium, someone has really bad autoimmune or psoriasis or something like that, or there's a deficiency there that we found. Um, but most of the time, you're gonna get enough selenium if you eat Brazil nuts on a daily basis. Duck eggs also are high in selenium. I'm such a big fan of duck eggs because they have most of what you need. But duck eggs, uh, Brazil nuts, those are two great sources right there. So I would do that other than taking a selenium supplement. What about vitamin C? Do you have to know, is it a good idea? I do think it's a good idea to have a vitamin C source, um, whether it's you taking a whole lemon every day and juicing it, or throwing it in the blender in one of your uh, smoothies. Maybe it's a uh, camu camu powder. So I like to use um, the kind of a mixed pow a powder of camu camu, or other really just high nutrient dense, or, or I'm sorry, vitamin C dense foods on a regular basis. I'm not a big fan of straight just ascorbic acid regularly. Um, I would rather have it in a kind of a more of a whole food source. Not to say that's bad, I think it's just gonna be more effective the other way. So vitamin C is something you wanna focus in. What about vitamin D3? Now recently there's been some things kind of like back and forth on this, but I would say this, from most of the research, most of the studies are showing us that we do want vitamin D3. However, you don't have to take it daily because it's a fat soluble vitamin and it's gonna hang around. So you could do maybe three or four times a week, take anywhere from five to 20,000 IUs, depending on where you're at and who you are. Meaning if you're in a very dark place, you have an autoimmune disease, you've tested low for vitamin D3, then maybe you're gonna take higher amounts. If you're in a very sunny place, you have no autoimmune issues whatsoever, you've never you've tested normal most of your life for vitamin D3, 
than small, 5,000, something like that, right? But we know vitamin D3 is very important. It's something that we don't get a lot from our food system, okay? What about B vitamins? You know what? I really do believe that I think people should, most, most of us should be taking a, a, a kind of a B vitamin complex on a regular basis or at least eating foods high in B vitamins, liver, um, things like uh, eggs, duck eggs, because, you know, meats, things like that, because, uh, you know, our body really does use B vitamins for almost every process from detoxification to um, cellular, all the other cellular functions, energy levels, um, so yeah, B vitamins, I would have that as a regular source of complex B vitamins. Now you could go individual on those if you had major issues in certain areas, right? But that's specific, right? And then, so what about zinc? I'm not a big fan of just taking zinc unless maybe you took, did a test, found that you were deficient in zinc, maybe your um, alkaline phosphatase levels were really low, or maybe you did the um, zinc test where you take zinc and you don't feel anything from it, and you know there's some, some tests I've taught in the past, but zinc, I would say not most people taking zinc regularly. What you could do though, and I think this is a good idea, is taking a, multi, a multi-mineral where you're getting all the minerals and zinc's a part of that, okay? On a regular basis, you can eat foods high in zinc as well. Um, potassium, yes, I do believe p- uh, most people are deficient in potassium and magnesium. So I'd be taking potassium, magnesium on a daily ba- basis, at least a potassium citrate, magnesium citrate at a minimum uh, to help replenish our body from the stress, from the caffeine, from the alcohol, from the lack of sleep, from the medications. All these things deplete our bodies in those main minerals and it's very important, right? It's, it's muscle health, heart health, uh, arterial wall strength, all those things. So if you're someone's getting cramps regularly, potassium, absolutely. Magnesium, absolutely. What else do we got here? Um, I think I went through vitamin K. Not necessarily all the time. I would just have vitamin K with your um, vitamin D. Um, and those are kind of the main ones that pop into my mind. I know I probably missed. Oh, vitamin E. Should you take vitamin E? There's actually a lot of studies showing that Vitamin E alone, especially when we get older, can actually have a negative impact on our body. We need a certain amount of oxidation in our system, and really all our our body's made to handle oxidation. It's it's a normal process of just even breaking down food and going through our day. And so too high levels of vitamin E taken regularly can actually have a negative impact from what a lot of the studies have shown. So eat foods high in vitamin E, eat your spinach, right? I mean, like, look, eat your eat your uh, duck eggs, eat eat things that are gonna be high in vitamin E, I wouldn't take it individually. So I wouldn't take A, I wouldn't take E, I wouldn't take selenium, I wouldn't take, um, what else, zinc by itself. These are some things that I don't think you need to have as your regimen, okay? Now, do you, should you take a multivitamin? Truthfully, I don't really like multivitamins either, and here's why, hear me out. I know you're gonna be like, whoa, whoa, whoa there's so much research on this. The reason I don't like multivitamins, number one, I don't, definitely don't like synthetic multivitamins, um, but even a whole food source, typically you have to have a lot of different foods in that whole food source multivitamin, and there's a likelihood that you're allergic to one of those foods, right? You might have a food sensitivity to them, and so like a great example is, you know, my wife, Dr. Holly, was taking a, um, I, won't, I won't say the name of the product, but it was a nutrient-mixed uh, product, and she was found out she was allergic to kale and apples, and those were both in there. She quit taking that, and her ring from her ring finger, uh, you know, for a wedding ring, actually didn't fit anymore because her hands shrunk. She was swollen all the time from, from taking that product, even though those foods are actually really good for you. So I'm a big fan of knowing your food allergies, but if you want a nutrient-dense food, take something like organ meats, liver is very good. You can take like broccoli sprouts, something just a smaller, dense amount of food instead of a big multivitamin, okay? So I think that's, that's, that's kind of the big picture there. So individual vitamins, not a huge fan of most of that, but uh, there are circumstances where that's the case. So, hey, make sure you share this video, like it, and um, yeah, continue to watch it, and, and we'll continue to share more information for you and uh, help you become your own health expert.